we've done it. We have hit 125 trade, and this is all through not using exploits for a change. There's no scumming around with companions there's no javelins there's no smithing this is just trading i currently have a crazy amount of money for this early on in the playthrough with a really strong army consisting primarily of lots of mercenary horsemen it's just awesome on a side note what's everyone's favorite tournament i just love the big heavy two-handed weapons of Britannia. i think they're so fun come on then saying <laughs> okay let's get into the video Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Today, we're going to be taking Trady McTrade face here and showing you the most efficient ways to trade. I have started off with the Asarai culture. However, both Batania and Kazate would also do absolutely fine. Asarai get the 10% decrease in trade penalty. Batania move a lot faster through forests, so it's easier to run away from big groups of enemies early game, and also just means you can get to your destinations quicker later on. And the Kazayat have a straight up movement bonus if you have a predominantly horse heavy army, all of which are very good choices for a tradesman. It's just personal preference really. The main reason I went for Asarai is because of our starting position. I'm doing this on the sandbox mode, and personally, I think we should start in Asarai territory to really get the trade steamrolling along. So the first thing we want to do is just make a few cheap but profitable trades and build up our initial party to make sure that we can't get ganked by small units of looters. The start is very easy and very straightforward. So of course here olives and fish are dirt cheap. We ideally need a couple of mules and or sumter horses. They are not incredibly cheap here. You're looking to try and get them around 40 to 50 dinars each. But we'll grab a couple so that we can hold some really cheap fish and olives. I now kind of wish I hadn't taken the name quite so long because I can't see my inventory capacity. This sucks. <laughs> right. Let's change this, shall we? Sorted. No! Oh no. I forget that your party still has that name, even if you change your character's name. Okay. BRB. Restarting. Just a little side note here, actually. I am doing this on the sandbox mode so that we can start a little bit older and have a little bit of a easier time early game. But the general principle works even if you're doing the main campaign. It just will take a tiny little bit longer. And if you do want to go full tradesman, you just want to increase your social and trade skill as much as you can during this first stage. Here, there is no trade or social skill, so I'm going to go with Road with the Scouts to increase our speed, our endurance, and also our bow skill. And we are back. So, we get a mule, we get a sumter horse, we get a few fish, and we get olives. We also want to grab some recruits if we can. And now we go start making our first little bit of money. So already fish is worth double here, and olives are worth about another six or seven dinars, and what we purchase them for as well, so boom. And these are even a little bit more expensive than they were, so let's sell them. This is what's going to make us the big bucks. Some to horses and mules are dirt cheap here. It will hugely reduce our party speed, but this is going to be very worth it, provided we can get to our next location. We'll grab a desert horse to try and increase the speed slightly, and also a few more recruits so that the speed penalty isn't quite as drastic. We also are out of food. We would like to be able to feed our troops. And you know what? Let's get one more of each. Now this straight away is where you can start making some really big profits with trading early game horses from Ascar up to Vlandia and parts of Batania are probably the most profitable trades that you can do even going into the late game I still use this tactic it's fantastic so what I'll probably do is show you a few early game trades a few good routes to do to really increase your trade skill and then jump back into the video once I've been playing for roughly 20 minutes maybe 30 minutes show you how quickly my trade skill has gone up in that period of time and also how we can continue to capitalize on that we have just quadrupled our money look at that this is insane now we want to head to Jacqueline and Galland they both sell wine and oil very 
very cheap. And also you'll find that most of their other goods are quite cheap as well. Okay, they've just proven me wrong. At the moment, most things actually are quite expensive. However, olives aren't. There are an awful lot of big groups of looters around here. This is a scary place to be. Speed is of the essence with this tactic because you are traveling quite a long distance to make sure you're maximizing your profits and obviously you're hemorrhaging money every single day doing this until you can get your first workshop. I'm going to risk running really slowly to show you something. Buying the fish for nine here, they should sell for quite a decent profit down in Asgar when we pick up our next bundle of horses. Okay, five apiece. That's really not bad. And the olives make us a decent profit too. Now, once again, cheap horses and as much grain as we can carry while still leaving us with enough money to support our troops until we can get to the next location. Okay, we don't move too slow. We've got four or five days worth of dinars. As long as we can get back to Vladimir in that time, we should be good. We now have a relatively big army with us, which means we're less likely to get ganked, so we can take a more direct route back. And this should be our first really good haul. We'll stop off at Ortizia just very quickly. Okay, I'm selling one mule here inefficiently just to make sure we have enough dinars to get over to Vlandia. Here we go. Ready him. Seven skill points we just got then. That's fantastic. Yes, please. We desperately need to carry more weight and a mercenary guard is going to be very good for us because all of these peasants are not protecting us very well now this is where we can seriously start to make some big bucks let's grab a couple of Asarai horses still get our mules and our sumpters a bit of food leave ourselves with enough money to get here and there and now we're running a lot faster and we're about to make some crazy good trades. This is where trade seriously starts to ramp up. And bearing in mind, I've still only been playing for about 10 minutes my time, which is probably going to be a few seconds your time once I've edited this. Now, it's taken us quite a while to find a city where the Asrai horses are profitable. However, we purchased them only a couple of days ago. 800 dinars and we can now sell them here for just under 2000 that has just tripled our profits and got us seven points in trade for one very easy transaction buying and selling horses definitely should be your mainstay for massively ramping up your trade skill and all you want to do really apart from that once you have one of the two perks that marks item prices relative to their average price is just go from town to town buying whatever happens to be cheap in that town selling whatever happens to be expensive and checking the horse prices just keep cycling horses and you will be rolling in money within weeks and not only that you will very swiftly unlock my favorite perk in the game it is a one two five trade and it means that every profitable shop that you own will give you one renown per day so when you're clan tier two and you can have three shops that means you're getting three passive renown every single day and i cannot stress enough how much that helps to increase your renown and your clan tier it is a phenomenal amount of renown and you will find your clan tier four and you have your own kingdom in no time trading is the best way to get renown it's crazy with that let me skip ahead a bit and show you exactly what i mean Welcome back everyone. We've done it. We have hit 125 trade and unlocked the artisan community perk. A few people will probably end up saying, hang on, why didn't you go for great investor? Because you can get more caravans than you can workshops. Therefore, you'll be getting even more renown every single day. And you're not wrong. But especially towards the late game, caravans are so much more difficult to keep alive than workshops. If you're going pure trade, you're never gonna be at war with anyone. Therefore, you're never gonna have any of your shops demolished. Whereas caravans can always get destroyed, especially if they're around the desert areas because desert raiders become enormous late game and are very, very fast. So that's why I recommend taking it slow and steady and being much more secure and going for artisan community rather than great investor. Now, 
we have our first workshop. We currently have 10 renown. I decided to go for a workshop, a brewery in Saniopa, because in another playthrough of mine, that is currently getting plus 700 dinars a day. So hopefully we should find that that starts to ramp up very quickly. And from selling lots and lots of horses, I currently have a crazy amount of money for this early on in the playthrough with a really strong army consisting primarily of lots of mercenary horsemen. So yeah, the upkeep's a bit expensive, but we're making so much money that it doesn't matter and this is all through not using exploits for a change there's no scumming around with companions there's no javelins there's no smithing this is just trading this is just being very efficient and very profitable with trade and using your perks wisely this is all very legitimate it's gonna feel a little bit broken but trust me this is what you get for the time and the effort and the research put into the game to figure out how the trade system works it's just awesome so now literally we have 10 renown i can just do wait some time for a month and i can just sit here if i want i will potentially lose a very 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 minuscule amount of dinars every day because my mercenaries are costing me quite a lot of upkeep but i don't even have to trade anymore at this point i can literally just sit here until my workshop gets me enough renown that i'm clan tier one and then with all this money I can go and make another one and you just snowball it's as simple as that as a merchant i now literally don't have to do anything if i don't want to obviously we want to that would be silly let's sell some more Asurai war horses increase our trade even more get even more money let's see if there's anything else profitable we can get here i've got plenty of grain and grapes oil is pretty cheap right now here wine's not bad but we've got plenty of both so whilst we wait for our workshop to make us lots of free renown we'll just walk around and make even more money in preparation for making a second workshop and you really can just snowball from this point this is it this is it my friends it is this easy once you've got that early game out of the way becoming a trader is crazy fun and a really relaxing way to play i love the fact that you can role play as so many different types of profession in this game we are full-on just a merchant right now that is our profession that is the game the game that we're playing through currently and it just makes you feel wonderful it's awesome olives are dirt cheap here let's get a couple of hundred olives wine is also pretty cheap as are tools and now a few of you may be asking yourselves well what now you've once again figured out how to break yet another mechanic dom bloody well done thanks <laughs> um what do i do with that well it's up to you. There is a playthrough I'm currently attempting where we want to get to 300 trade and I just want to buy out the world. I want to see if you can become the ruler of all of Calradia without ever having to go to war with anyone. I just want a merchant empire with seven workshops and 10 caravans and I just want to be able to buy the world. Without exploits, without smithing, through fully legitimate means, I reckon it can be done and it would be amazing. However, that said, that doesn't mean that's the route you have to take. You now have an endless amount of money to fund a war machine. You can throw your lot in with another faction. You could strike it out on your own. God knows you've got enough money to do so. The world is your oyster at this point. So let me know if you do decide to become a trader for your next playthrough. Let me know in what direction you take it. I'm interested. Let your imagination run wild and let us all know what you decide to do now that you're just wealthy beyond your wildest dreams. Before I end the video, I would like to make sure this is a fully comprehensive trade guide and not just, oh, sell horses, make a workshop, profit. So let me give you a few more hints and tips of products to buy if and when you're in certain regions of the world uh things to stay away from purchasing things to actively purchase to make sure that if you did want a bit more of a comprehensive trade playthrough and not just flogging horses left right and center you do have a few more tools in your arsenal than just horses grain is absolutely phenomenal in Saniopia and Amitatis. You can pick up grain from for like three dinars in both of these villages. Also Sanala. So depending on whether you're in the central landmass or whether you're down here, these three have lots of uh, villages nearby that produce grain. So you can get grain 
dirt cheap there. And then there's no one real good place to sell the grain. But what you basically want to do is check to see if any cities are currently being besieged and wait until that changes hands. This has recently changed hands. This was owned by the Britannians. And then go and sell all your grain there. You can probably get 10 times your money back for grain. Also, salt. You can get salt dirt cheap in Vostrum. You can get it for like 15 dinars and it will sell upwards of 30, sometimes even 40, pretty much anywhere else in the world. And now that I'm rich as hell, I've been able to completely kit my character out with armor, which is just wonderful. So that will probably wrap it up for the trade guide. Yeah, okay, it's no 10 million from exploiting your friends and family, but it's honest work and it makes you feel super cool. I strongly suggest you all give it a go.